where do we begin? So hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little YouTube corner where I talk about all that I've been knitting. So usually I only do regular podcast episodes, but I've really been enjoying watching everyone who's done sort of a recap of 2021, so I figured I would do the same. I spent some time gathering almost all of my knitted garments from last year. I had a lot of them at the cabin and I brought them at home so that I could show it for you and um, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm only going to be doing the garments and one shawl because that was a sweater quantity, so I figured I would include that. Um, but I've been knitting all of the blah, blah, blah words. This is going to be a long one. I've also been knitting a lot of accessories, but um, I'm going to stick to the garments. Uh, so if you are new here and you like what you see today and you want to see more, but you're more of an accessory knitter, feel free to go back and watch my podcast episodes. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, hello. This is going to be a repetitive episode. You're going to probably have seen all of these 30 or so garments. Because um, apparently I've been doing a lot of knitting. So find yourself something to drink and uh, let's get into this whole situation over here. Um, trying a new setup today. I've been waiting for daylight for a while now to record, but there is no daylight. It's been a storm raging for several days and this is my living room. I have a lot of windows here, so even though uh, I'm currently inside a cloud, I see nothing outside. At least there is more daylight than my knitting room, so we're gonna try this and I hope it's okay. So let's get going. Okay, so I did make a little cheat list, so if I look down, that's what I'm looking at because with my foggy brain, I never remember everything that I wanted to say. So I figured I would start with um, the beginning of 2021, everything that I've finished. So before I finished any garments, I did some mohair socks, um, some more rustic socks. I did the Mellomscherf by Droppele design, which is currently at the cabin. I could have shown that as well because that was also five skeins of yarn, but um, I forgot. Then I created my slouchy beanie design using Cardiff cashmere that is currently in my car because I got off shift today and it was snowing and I had that on. Uh, I also made my Moors Hell socks. And then I moved from Vik Isong, which is where I worked as a primary care physician for six months. And I moved back here to Førde, which is on the west coast of Norway. And I finished my first garment and only dress of 2021. So I have two piles of clothing to show. Um, it was two, two piles like so. So I'm gonna try and not knock you guys over as I'm reaching for this humongous nest dress. Not a nest, it's a dress. Um, maybe I'm too close to the camera. I hope you can still see um, if I find the energy, I will put this on and show it to you guys in all its glory. This is the Augustine's number 11 and it's supposed to be just one color um, but I realized, because I think I knit the top part first, uh, in Hexa, it's a Norwegian chained yarn uh, that I held double. So I guess drops air held double would equal this. 
it's not what's in the pattern this will stash yarn and I realized that uh, it used up quite a lot so I wasn't gonna have enough so I also had it in green so I marled it together one strand of each for the skirt and as you see it's longer in the back and I also created the eye cord edgings on the sleeves the neck band and the bottom in that green um, hexa yarn this is extremely soft it is so comfortable and i do not wear it as much as it deserves so maybe i'll put this on later today because i'm going for sushi so maybe i can dress up with my knitted dress so yeah super comfy uh, highly recommend this pattern i have not knitted anything else than the augustine's number 11 but there are some other designs that i would probably like to um, knit in the future i've also been contemplating just knitting the top part of this dress as a sweater and not do the skirt just because i wear sweaters a lot more than dresses i think that could be really cute as well all right um throwing everything on the floor <laughs> the next thing that I finished was another sweater um, again using my stash because I have been trying to use my stash probably it's still grown but I tried this is a very comfy sweater that I made without any pattern really I just made it up as I went, um, I used the Petite Wool by We Are Knitters, which I had in my stash. I think I used six and a half balls of this yarn. And I did stockinette. And then I did slip stitches um, on the front here. I think I did, yeah, I probably did one purl stitch on each side of the slip stitch detail. And on the sleeves, I did the same. Um, a slip stitch detail going down the outer edge of the sleeve. And also along the side of the sweater underneath the armpit, I also did the same. And I did an eye core bind off on the bottom of the body and the sleeve. Uh, the top neck I kept as a roll neck. Um, it is very comfortable. I don't find this wool itchy at all, but it peels a lot. Um, so because of the fact that it peels so much, I don't know if I will use this yarn again. Whatever I had left in my stash of this yarn, I have used to create blankets at the cabin. Some I gifted to my mother and some I knitted up myself. And if you've watched one the cabin episodes, in one of them I showed this huge blanket in um, this color and like an olive green and I finished that one. So I've used up almost all of the yarn I had for that blanket. Um, so I don't know, I personally wouldn't use this for a garment again because it pills so much. Um, this yarn is almost like an unspun yarn. It's not pencil roving, it's a lot sturdier, uh, but it doesn't really have a twist to it. Um, I don't know if you can see it if I hold it up really close or if it's just gonna blow out. Um, but yeah. And if I was gonna use really soft yarn again, the, he the dress in Hexa that I showed, that chain yarn, that pills a lot less than this and it's a lot softer. Um, but I find that chain yarn pill uh, less than this kind of yarn does. Um, maybe it's because chain yarn, they blow fibers through this sort of mesh tube and probably that keeps the fibers, but still being airy. Uh, so it pills less. I don't know, maybe. Also, when you knit with two strands instead of just one strand, they will um, sort of twist around each other. And that also helps with pilling. 
which is one of the reasons I love pairing mohair with other fingering weight yarns because they hold each other. It's still, still gonna be super soft, but um, you don't get as much of a pilling. So that's an idea if you have a lovely soft yarn and you're afraid of pilling, you could combine it with um, another strand of, let's say, silk mohair, and that will help a lot. Um, as a general rule, the softer the yarn, the more it pills, but factors such as long staple length and high twist will um, make it less likely to pill. All right, so that was my second garment. We're 10 minutes in and uh, we got 28 garments to go. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> So, um, before the next garment, I made another slouchy beanie. Um, I made some Lumi socks by Fiber Tails. I really love that pattern if you want some comfy house socks in Alpha Slopey. Um, I made some scrappy socks. I made the Tilda mittens and hat with uh, some lovely yarn from my yarn pal Sue in Canada. And uh, another pair of Lumi socks. And then... This was a single uh, skein of um, silk mohair. Oh, I have it inside out. That I got from my yarn pal Sue. We sent each other yarn. Um, and this was a single skein in handmaiden yarn. And I just thought it was so beautiful. So I asked around and people said I could probably make a ranunculus out of this single skein so that is what i did so this is 400 or so meters of silk mohair and it created this in my opinion beautiful uh gold um t-shirt so i did do a little bit of knit one pearl one a twisted rib for the t-shirt just to have it just a little bit longer um, that was the last thing I did after finishing the body at the length that I was comfortable with because if I'm not comfortable with the length it will not be worn so I wanted to make sure that and it's all wrinkly sorry <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that it was long enough and then whatever little scrap I had left I divided into two and I um, knit the sleeves to the maximum length so I had nothing left of the yarn um, really, really beautiful. I need to have something underneath it to wear it. Um, and I do love a longer sleeve than this, but it is really beautiful. And if I were to wear this with a black tank top and black jeans, this would also look kind of dressed up because of the silky golden um, shine to it. It's more true to color over here. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with it. It's super soft and it shows that it is possible. Um, of course, my gauge was tighter than in the pattern um, because I didn't, I didn't intend to meet gauge break because this is a, the ranunculus is, um, it's a one size and you adjust gauge to, to alter it and uh, I didn't need it to be as big as in the pattern, so I think I used I think I used 5.5 or 6 millimeter needles. I, I don't remember now, but um, yeah, so mine is probably slightly smaller than the original pattern, but that fits me. So this was my first ranunculus and not the last one of this year. And the next thing that I made was another garment, this huge garment right here. This is the Alasuk Polar. And now it's the Alasuk Polar from, I'll put it here. The Alasuk Polar by Norwegian designer. This is knit in Alafasloopy and let loopy. Um, I used Alafa Slopey for the beige, the fuchsia purple kind of color and I think also the light blue was um, uh, was Alafa Slopey but the green, yellow and orange was let loopy. 
Um, so if you're not familiar with the Istex yarns, the Let Lopi is half the thickness of the Alephas Lupi. So if you hold the Let Lopi double, that equals the Alephas Lopi. I keep wanting to say Alasuk, but that's the pattern name. So I did that in order to get colors that I wanted. I wanted a very um, eastery sweater, um, a sweater that I can wear outside in the snow without needing a jacket. It is very warm, very rustic. If you have sensitive skin, the Icelandic yarns might not be for you, but if you're looking for something really warm, this is a safe bet to go for. And um, I don't mind wearing it next to skin, um, but as you can see, if you look closely, it does have these um, hairs that stick out from it, uh, and that does make it um, a bit more scratchy, I would say. But you could always wear something underneath and have this as an outer layer, um, just to keep yourself warm, and I usually have something underneath, because then I can take it off when I get inside. So, and after the Alasuk Polar, I finished a sweater that I have been working on for a while. So this was a self-drafted pattern that I made. I had a cone of Holst Super Soft in the color Cinnamon. So I bound off a few balls and then I held it double and I started to create this pattern. So I call this my cable sweater. I knit it bottom up um, using a lot of different uh, cables. And um, it was quite a handful to knit this and um, both sides are the same. I did some moss stitches um, between the sections of cables and then I made the sleeves and I tried to sort of shape the sleeves so that I had a sort of a curve decrease and then I kept the braid on the sleeve going all the way up to the neckband and I'm really happy and proud of myself if I may say so of how this turned out. I think it's one of the most beautiful garments that I have. I'm almost a little bit afraid to wear it too much because I I just want to keep this forever, but the whole super soft held double, it's going to be a workhouse yarn. I don't really need to worry at all. I've only washed it once um, since I finished it. This is quite big. Um, it's quite oversized on me. It fits perfectly on my boyfriend and my brothers. So it really is um, a sweater that everyone can use. And I do keep this at the cabin, um, but I might keep it here for a little while now because I think I want to wear it a little bit more of myself here at home. Um, maybe with some blue jeans, it would look nice. And for some of my garments, I do put a little extra finishing touch and attach a tag in the back um, that says handmade. And I figured this sweater uh, deserved one of those little extra touches. So yeah, really happy with this. Um, I have a lot more holes super soft in my stash now because uh, apparently on New Year's Eve, I made a purchase. Um, I don't know if anyone else have done that, but it was a very nice surprise in 2022 to receive a parcel of Holst Super Soft. So yes, really, really happy with this sweater. Um, the yarn itself has a lot of spinning oil in it, and since I only hand washed it once, I think it still has a bit of spinning oil in it that makes it a little bit stiffer. So maybe I will wash it again. Um, and see if it softens up even more. It already has softened up a lot, but I think it will, it has the potential to soften up even more. And then I think I went straight to, uh, I made another pair of Moosehead pattern socks, and then I made a sweater. And this sweater is Lene Sin Flashdance Ganser. 
this is a pattern by Moharia and she had gifted me this um, yellow, pink and green yarn to make uh, one of her Easter sweaters but um, she had some other patterns that appealed more to my taste than um, her Easter sweater because I, I kind of thought I would look like a strawberry so I asked her if I could make one of her other patterns and I really liked Lannis and Flashdance Ganser which is a cropped 80s inspired sweater and then I used scraps to put in details so there is a blue with a golden stripe here and then a brown with gold down there and I used up all the yarn I have nothing left and I even ran out at some point so I did um, marl some gold in at the end here just to make um, the sweater last a bit longer so yeah this is a very fun Easter sweater the colors are quite in your face so I don't wear this most of the year but as soon as Easter rolls around again this is um, this is gonna be on me again and uh, I have gotten a lot of looks wearing this in public because I am very visible this is um, a South African yarn African Expressions Love and it's a really really nice thick mohair yarn and uh, this was my second sweater knit in this yarn and I've knit one more this year as well and then after finishing this Easter sweater so we're around Easter of 2021 now I finished let's see I need my cheat sheet uh, oh there we are and I made another pair of socks, uh, another design of mine, the rustic cabled socks, which is somewhere in the house. And that was also yarn that I got from Sue. And then I made a beer mitten. So it's a felted mitten where you put your hand inside and it's a, it's a circular construction and you can put a can of whatever beverage inside it. That's at the cabin. And then I made the Summer Secret Crop by, I feel like I've skipped so many things. No, I have not skipped so many things. That is the garment that I don't have here. I don't know where it is. I think maybe it's at the cabin. Um, I made the Summer Secret Crop. I didn't like the way it fit me but that might just have been the cotton yarn that I used she has another um, top which is um, a ribbed one which is a huge favor of favorite of cat from Heather and hops so I think I will be making that in the future because I really do want some woolen uh, tops to have next to skin underneath my other garments so maybe that's on the agenda for 2022 but next after this i finished let's see next page i finished the uh chestnut cardigan by marie wallen so this was another one of the garments that took me quite a while to make um that i had started in 2020 uh, but didn't finish it until 2021 so this is an all over uh, color work cardigan and it was a labor of love this pattern is originally knit in pieces but I I really 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 don't like purling in color work so I wanted this sweater so badly but I knew that if I had to knit it in pieces I just wasn't going to and I think it's very different based on your knitting style and what way you purl and knit but for me my style purling and color work is it's just not gonna happen so I altered it to be a steaked cardigan and in the end it did turn out really well um, it's beautiful and I've gotten a lot of compliments on this 
Again, this is one of the pieces that I'm the most proud of next to the cable sweater and I'm almost afraid to wear it. Um, I really, really like the detail of the color change in, in the um, ribbed border. I chose some little wooden buttons for the button band. And I haven't um, sewn anything over the raw edges. I felted these, um, needle felted these before I cut it. And it's held up beautifully, uh, no problem there. Um, the only thing that makes me a little bit sad is that um, my gauge probably changed during the time from when I swatched and um, the time where I knit this. So I think my gauge is a little bit too tight and also maybe I've gained a little bit of weight. I don't know, but it's just a little bit too small. I wish I would have gone up in needle size or pattern size so that it would have been more of an over oversized cardigan because that's just more comfortable um, than a negative ease cardigan in color work. Also, I ran out of the brown yarn, and, but that all worked itself out, thankfully. Um, maybe one day I'll muster up the energy to make another one. Um, I used her yarn, the Marie Wallen British Breeds. It's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, rustic and warm but quite soft like a Shetland uh, Shetland wool it has a tendency to pill just a little bit um, but I can just depill it and I think it will be just fine and this was a kit um, that I bought with her yarn for this sweater so these are the exact same sweater um, colors exact same colors as she has in her chestnut cardigan pattern if anyone's interested in that and then after that uh, I made um, a shawl a garter shawl using Alpida from the Athenian maker and then I made some Rusesocke which is a pattern which my grandmother really loves a colorwork sock my mother got those for Christmas. And then I made the Cedar Point by Espace Tricot. And this is a sweater that I have wanted to make for a very long time. Espace Tricot has free patterns, uh, beautiful patterns. I think this was designed by Melissa when she still owned the store. And I just thought that it was such a chic and stunning pattern. So I wanted to make it. And I wanted to make it using stash yarn that I had. So this is a finul in light beige that I held together with, let's see, maybe I put down a note, um, concept silk mohair. And then the black yarn is Varda from Hilsvog, which I do think I bought last year. And I don't know, I, a lot of their patterns have a lot of positive ease. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have sized down because it is a bit too much positive ease for what I, oh, yarn, <laughs> fluff, too much positive ease for what I prefer. And also I do think that the Varda yarn, which is a peltable yarn, I think with the gauge that this was knitted on, it grew a little bit, so it got even bigger than intended, but, um, this one I keep at the cabin and I have actually been using it a lot since Christmas because when we've gotten back from skiing we take off all of the cold sweaty clothes and this is just a really nice piece to put on top of whatever I'm wearing just to get a little bit of warm comfort until my skin heats back up. Um, because when it's minus 20 and you're skiing for an hour or two, your skin cools down a lot, even though you might feel really warm. So this has been a nice comfort to put on. And it also has this detail down at the cuffs. Um, 
It's supposed to have a rolled hem, I think, for both the body and sleeves, but I did an I-cord edging on the sleeves, even though I did stay to the rolled edging on the neckline and on the body. All right. So we finished the small pile of clothing and we're now moving on to the um, summer part of 2021. Um, the next thing I made was the cropped western tee by Vitre and I used this using yarn from my knit crate box which they sent me as an affiliate member so this was uh, gifted yarn and every month I get two skeins so with these two skeins I created this and now I don't remember the name but you can go back to the episode but this is the cropped western tee by Vitre Design I used those two skeins and I used up all of it and it is very cropped since I am a tall person but with words with high-waisted jeans this is really quite the perfect length um, I've also been wearing it to bed when it's been really cold um, sort of as um, a nice warm piece uh, just so that I don't freeze uh, and as well I wear knitted socks to sleep when it's really cold out and yeah not much more to say about this a nice little t-shirt I definitely wear sweaters more than t-shirts but I have made quite a lot of tops this summer and they have gotten surprisingly a lot of wear then I made my second ranunculus again using stash yarn this was um, the ranunculus using uh, Fibra Natura papyrus which was a, a plant-based yarn that I bought in Turkey a few years ago and this feels so so lovely to the touch I think it really made the stitches stand out it has a beautiful drape to the pattern and um, I made the sleeves a little bit longer so these are a bit longer than my first version and it's gotten the most wear out of all of the summer tops that I've made this year it feels so nice next to my skin it's it's just so soft so if you're looking for a plant-based yarn that feels really nice I highly highly recommend this one I wish I had more of it but um I used it all and it looks really nice on the body as well I find the color is really flattering um, when my skin gets a little bit of color in the summer it looks really nice with this creamy creamy ivory and the drape just is really flattering and I hope I can go back to Turkey soon and visit this little local yarn store who had this uh, support them get some more and maybe make some more of this um, in the future so that one also got one of those little leather tags in it and then after that I created this pattern this is the school maca sweater by fiber tails I hope the lighting is okay it's getting really dark here um, I used stash yarn for this as well this was pickles merino tweed um, and I think this is a single ply yarn it feels really nice and soft it's not those smooth um, superwash merino it's a non superwash merino and it's tweedy um, so I just love it I also love the color and of course if I weren't if I was using a smoother yarn that didn't have a tweedy effect the patterning would stand out a lot better than what it does here but I don't mind it I think it's a little bit of interest but it, I love the feel of it it's very lightweight two to three balls I think three balls maybe I used for this um, so less than 300 grams and 
I've been using this a lot during hiking in the summer and fall because it's so lightweight, um, it weighs nothing, uh, but it still gives a little bit of warmth since it's 100% non-superwash wool. So it's been a really nice thin wool layer to put on when hiking if it gets a bit cold or when walking down from the mountain. Um, so I think I'll be making more of this pattern in the future. I do, looking back, I think some of the things that I've enjoyed the most are these tops which have structure um, patterns on the yoke. I really, really like those. Um, because I love knitting stockinette, but then it still has a bit of interest going on at one point, and it looks really nice. And then I made the flutter butt, flutter butt shirt by Jessie May Designs in a Felizzi Punto uh, yarn. The base is Solaris, and I'm gonna hold it the right way up. So this is this pattern. It's a silk blend yarn. I just thought their colors were stunning. Um, just, just beautiful. Um, and it used two skeins for this pattern. And I'm looking forward to wearing this again in the summer uh, when it's really warm because it needs to be warm to wear something like this in Norway. Uh, so right now it's in my closet waiting for the next season. And then I finished a woolen sweater in the summer as well. This was a sweater that was sponsored by the Bellish app. Um, they paid me to knit something and show it on the podcast. So I created the Far sweater. Um, it's a top-down raglan construction, simple sleeves and neckline. Um, and then I chose this nice uh, braided detail that goes around the bottom. And then instead of doing the ribbing as instructed, I just continued doing this patterning. Uh, and this is one of my favorite sweaters from this year. I knitted in a stash yarn that I had, which was a cone from Rauma, which I think is Fienul. And, it, and for every time I wear it and wash it, it just gets softer. Um, but I still think that the braids look really nice in this yarn. Sadly, uh, Bellish, which was a free app, will be closing down on the 31st of January because they didn't have the funding to keep going, which is, which is really sad because I thought their concept was brilliant, that you could pick elements that you liked and it generated a free pattern for you. And um, yeah, it's, it's sad that they had to close down. They wanted it to be accessible for everyone, but they didn't have the funding, so instead of making it a paid thing, they decided to close down. So before the 31st of January, go on there and create something and uh, screenshot the patterns. They sent an email saying you could do that if you um, wanted to use it before it closed down. So yeah, the far sweater is what I called this. Uh, far is what we call grandfather um, some places in Norway and my grandfather died this year so this was sort of a tribute to him and then after that I got back into some more summer knitting I made a test knit or I knitted a test knit this is the Seaborn Tee by Herb Garden Knitwear and I knit this in Line from Sanaskarn, which is what was the recommended yarn in the pattern. And as it's a Norwegian yarn, it was easy for me to get this yarn. So um, I have like a mustard and a natural, natural white uh, creamy one for this. And I think I did some more stripes than um, in the pattern just to make it the best length for my body. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The shell detailing on the sleeves and on the body is just such a nice detail. And I got a lot of wear out of this in the summer. And I'm looking forward to getting a lot of wear out of it again the next summer. And then 
I knit another pair of the Moors' Hale socks. Gotta have a little bit of accessories in between all of these garments. And then I made the outline tank, but Jesse made using some gifted yarn from Bente from Arctic Crafts and Norwegian Dyer. And um, this was a new technique to me with these dropped stitches that are on the front and they are on the back and they are on the sides. So that was a lot of fun. Um, this top has not gotten as much wear as the other ones and I do think that is just because I prefer uh, covering the top of my sleeve. So maybe um, making the t-shirt version, because she also has a t-shirt version of this, um, would be better suited for my wardrobe. So I might do that, but it is a really nice layering piece as well. And yeah, so I'll look, I'm looking forward to having this for those um, in between seasons where you want layers, you might want something warm because this is wool. Um, so I think it's going to be really nice for that. And then I finished the Brise Top by 50 Fabulous Pia. She's Danish and she created this beautiful pattern and I was gifted this pattern. Again, I knit this in Line from Sanneskarn. And this is just such a stunning top. Again, with these uh, structured yokes, it's just something I really, really like. Um, so this has some lace and then it has those beautiful bubbles. And I put a little tag in the back. It's a cropped t-shirt. Um, the sleeves are a nice length for me. And it's just a really, really beautiful design. And this is like a sagey, silvery green colorway, which is blowing out a little bit because of the weird lighting, but um, it's this or nothing. So yeah, really, really happy with this t-shirt as well. The last summer garment of 2021 is the So Summer shirt by Jessie Maid. And again, knit in Felizi Punto yarns. This top was a lot nicer looking on than I thought it was going to be because I'm not a huge fan of drop shoulders because for my body I feel like they create a broader shoulder and make me look broader but it looks really nice. Um, maybe it's the color. <laughs> I thought this color was so beautiful. Um, this is the Solaris Base by Felici Punto and i don't remember the colorway but you'll recognize it if you go to their store beautiful yarn and um it has this folded brim on the sleeves and bottom and a rolled neck on top and i think it's just beautiful so i'm looking forward to wearing this again as soon as it gets a bit warmer and then next up I made a scrappy rug, like a wo woven woven rug, that's at the cabin. And then I made a sweater. This is, let's see if I can fold the neck. I'll just show it like this. This is a Sara sweater by Leni Hoimela, which is a Finnish designer. I used this uh, gifted yarn from Zakami. This is their fluff sock base which is incredibly fluffy and soft. Um, the colorway means earth, but now boomy. I think, yeah, I think it was boomy, which means earth. They um, are based in the UK and they dye the most luxurious hand dyed yarns that are not superwash. I got their advent calendar or I bought their advent calendar in 2021 and it was just beautiful so i used that for this sweater i the only thing i wish i would have done differently is that i was worried because this yarn is so soft that the pockets would um, kind of drag too far down so i made the pockets smaller and i wish i would have just followed the pattern because i think it would have looked nicer than 
the alterations that I did, but we live and we learn. It's a really comfortable, soft sweater. Um, a really, really cozy one. I think this sweater looks a lot different and it in a more stiff yarn. Um, so I might make it again with a very different yarn so it will be two completely different sweaters. Uh, yeah, really, really happy with this. And then next, this is not a sweater or a top. This is the half and half wrap by Pearl Soho, which is a free pattern and it is huge. So I made the large size and I think I also sized up with the needle size. So it's, it's humongous. Um, <laughs> there, a lot of people were knitting this in 2021. Uh, Katie Jack's podcast, they hosted a knit along for this. I don't think I finished it in time for the knit along, but I just wanted to knit it because everyone was knitting it. Um, it uses Linen Quill by Pearl Soho and I bought a lot of it. <laughs> I've So far I've only knit this with it, but I am planning on making more. This has gotten a lot of wear, surprisingly. It is huge. I feel like I'm wearing a blanket. And I love it. So this is my new shlanket. Sometimes I wear it as a shawl, but most of the time, my pile collapsed. Most of the time I wear it as a blanket. When I go to the cabin, I keep it on my lap as a lap blanket. And at the cabin, when it is really cold, cold I will wear it like an old lady and um, be super comfortable. Yes. Juniper green and it is in my show notes. If you go back to my podcast, this other color, um, heathered gray. No, I, I'm not completely sure, but this is juniper green. Uh, maybe it's oatmeal, maybe it's heathered gray. I don't know. It's one of those neutral, warm, light gray colors. And I think they look really nice together. And then, oh, my feet are falling asleep. What's next? So after the half and half wrap, which was a free pattern, I bought a yarn kit for a jacket from the yarn store here in Ferda. We have two. So this is the Wildflower jacket. It's a pattern from uh, House of Yarn and Camilla Peel, which is, I guess, a knitwear designer as well. She dabbles in a lot of things. Uh, I saw this in a free knitting pattern magazine in the store and they carried the yarn. So I couldn't resist. I really wanted to make this. It is so soft and fluffy. The yarn is called Fnug and it's mostly alpaca, I think. It's, hmm. It's so squishy. This has actually been getting a lot of wear because it's so easy to throw on and it's soft and it's warm. Um, I altered the pattern a little bit because I wanted it to be longer. So I bought this green that wasn't in the sort of instructions for it. And I just added it every now and then to make it longer. Um, the yarn is held double, so it was quite an investment to make this, but it is really nice and soft. And it's been worn so much that it's kind of paid itself back. So it was, it was nice. And whatever leftovers I had, I really wanted to use them up. So I self-drafted a t-shirt, just striping it with whatever I had. I think I started bottom up. And then I did raglan decreases. Um, I haven't been wearing this as much because it's a really warm t-shirt. Um, it's short sleeved. Alpaca itches um, the top part of my neck a little bit. So it's definitely not as good a fit for what I like as the cardigan is. Um, but it was nice to use up the scraps and I have used it a little bit, but I might gift this in the future to someone who will wear it more than me. 
and I think also the the length of the sleeves I wish they would have been a little bit longer but I ran out of yarn and also um, it has a lot of these two colors here which are not my favorite they're my least favorite um, so I think if this was white it would have looked more like my aesthetic but again I was using up what I had so this is what I had the most left of then after that I initially cast on the Weekender Lights by Andrea Maury um, but I made so many alterations that I don't even know if you can call it that it has the same amount of cast on stitches on the body and it does have that um, slip stitch detail um, on the purl side but I mostly wear it on the knit side because I prefer the knitted fabric um, I made a raglan construction instead of what's in the pattern different neckline different sleeves different mostly everything this is yarn that I bought um, it's the folklore by into the woods in I think the color is rust I do love my rust I think it's my favorite color I always gravitate towards it this is a very rustic yarn out of everything that I made in 2021 this is the most scratchy it's more scratchy to me than the Alafa Sloopy um, but it is really warm uh, it's a thin fabric fingering weight but very warm and I made some alterations to the neckline as well just to not have it as far up because of that scratchiness and um, as long as I am not super warm because when I feel warm things scratch more uh, this is a really great sweater and split hem on the bottom uh, I would like to make something like this again I really do like this kind of shape and ooh, this yarn was really beautiful um, yeah I like it but if you're sensitive it's not the yarn for you but it is really nice and warm if you like the rustics and I think it'll just soften up with every wash and every wear um, so yeah the Weekender light initially turned into something very, very different, but very lovely. And I think I still want to make the Weekender, either the light or the original, as the pattern instructed at some point. But I will be using a softer yarn because it is quite high up on the neck. Next, I finished another pattern by Andrea Maury. This is the Shifty sweater. I used Spin Cycle in the color Grumpy Birds. And then their nocturne base uh, brown sugar for the contrast and I used only one contrast color for the whole sweater um, to kind of have something going through so it wouldn't be extremely blocky um, I really like the effect of that I did have to pick out some green scraps every now and then and use that for the last few um, centimeters because I ran out of the brown sugar I only had two balls of that yarn I'm really happy with how this turned out I love the colors of this it's I would say zero to negative ease the yarn is beautiful but I do find that it has um, a bit of a pilling tendency so I um, I'm almost scared of wearing it too much because I want it to look nice it was quite a bit of knitting since this is knit in a mosaic kind of style but it was a lot of fun to knit it as well and then I made some more Moors Helsa how what I made some more Moors Hell socks I made some baby hats for um, friends who were expecting and then I made some kitchen towels because we moved into this house with some stash cotton yarn that I had I made some more socks and then I created this sweater so this was some gifted piece fleece yarn 
and the green is mule spinner yarns which um, I swapped with uh, Sue and I just created this top-down turtleneck sweater I used two skeins of this because I had that in my stash and then I had four colors in the peace fleece in the white a reddish rusty one the yellow and the brown I had one skin of each of those and I knew that wasn't going to be enough for a sweater probably which is why I combined it with the mule spinner yarn um, they're all wooden woolen spun and they're really nice I find this next to skin it's it doesn't have as much of a prickle factor as the Icelandic yarn and the um, into the woods it, it feels drier sort of and I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's cropped, boxy, straight sleeves with a long ribbing. I didn't do as much of a ribbing um, on the body because I found that this looked nice. Um, same length as the stripings. Um, I have considered writing this up, but I haven't gotten around to it. Um, but I'm really, really happy with this sweater. Uh, it kind of gives me a retro 70s vibe looks really nice with jeans and it's just really comfy um, I think it's worsted peace fleece is it worsted heavy decay I don't know but it's really warm and it's just really nice I'm happy with that one um, and then two sweaters left of 2021 this is the Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter I have wanted to knit this for a long time because I find it's a really beautiful color work and I also wanted to try myself at a v-neck construction so there are some alterations to this um, you can go back and see but I did the sleeves straight instead of doing the decreases in the charts because that's the shape that I like I made both the sleeves and the body longer, but it's still somewhat cropped in the body. I used Usk from Hillsvog to create this pattern, and I love it. Um, this has gotten a lot of wear, and I'm really happy with all the little modifications I made. Um, I think the color work is stunning and um, I really really like this sweater and I have more Usk in my stash so I can make more color work sweaters in the future maybe in the Nordiska uh, because with these modifications because um, I think it's really really nice the last sweater is a sweater that I knit with my mother this is the Nika sweater which was um, a kit that I bought from Hillesvog. It uses their yarn uh, Vidda, but you can also use their yarn Varda. So I used Vidda for the green and gray, but the rust color is in Varda, which is a pelt wool. Vidda is a lamb's wool. Um, and that's just because they were out of the rust color in the lamb's wool base. My mother uh, knit the body and then I knit the sleeves and the color work and most of the yoke and neckline. Um, she also knit a bit of the neckline and it took us three days and we were done with this. Um, I'm really happy with it. It looks a lot better on than I thought it would after washing it. Everything kind of just um, went how we wanted it to. It has a really nice drape. It's super warm but airy and light it's all wrinkled up now I'm so sorry and I've been wearing this skiing uh, underneath my windproof jackets because it has been really cold and nothing beats um, a knitted non superwash wool sweater it really keeps you warm and even though you might get wet or sweaty it breathes and it still isolate insulates insulates you I don't know it's just great if you haven't tried it you should try it and since we love this one so much, I had another um, yarn kit from Hillesvog, so we knitted that over New Year's Eve weekend, and that is also finished, and I'll show it on the next podcast. Um, 
There are two sweaters that I have not shown. I created the Wintergan sweater by Moharia. That is a sweater that I gifted to my mother for Christmas and she loved it. And I also made another bellish sweater uh, in alpaca yarn that I gifted for my brother. And I've already seen him wear it more than once, so I think he also really loved it. And that was all the garments that I made in 2021. I made 30, so let's see how many there will be for 2022. I hope you enjoyed this segment. I forgot to say what I'm wearing. This is the Björk uh, Genster by, I think it's by Sanneskarn. It's, um, I needed to buy um, like a, a pamphlet book from them in order to get this pattern because I couldn't find it online. Um, I knitted with two strands of strands of Arla, which is a silk mohair, instead of three strands, which were in the pattern of silk mohair, because I think Arla was slightly thicker. Um, I really love this yarn. I love the color. Um, it's really soft and nice and airy. It wasn't too fun to knit those, though, because of this smock stitch patterning which was, um, it wasn't fun to knit it in a silk mohair yarn, but it looks really nice. So I'm really happy that I made it. Um, yes, that was everything for today. I hope um, you're having a lovely time today. I hope that you're well and that 2022 will give you a lot of joy and knitting and uh, maybe you found some inspiration here today. And yes, I will see you soon. Bye.